Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. This teaching that I've been doing about the Sabbath rest, and it was based on Hebrews chapter 4, I tell you, this is a powerful truth. I just, uh, I think that this has to be one of the clearest explanations or the clearest ways of explaining about grace and faith. Trusting what God has done through grace instead of you getting God to respond to you by all of the faith things that you do. This is just a powerful illustration. And if you've missed any of this teaching, please get this uh, uh, special CD that we're offering because I promise you this is a life changer. Now yesterday I was using Colossians chapter 2 and I said a lot in that one program. I said so much that uh, I want to just slow down and go back and emphasize some of these things and make this point because I violated a tremendous amount of religious tradition on our program yesterday. And I know that there's bound to be people that are upset, but you know, at the same time, I believe that there are people all around the world being set free as they hear the truth. And in their heart, they know that this is true and that the Lord is bearing witness with it. And so I'm not looking at the people who will be offended by this, but I'm looking at all of the changed lives that will come by hearing somebody tell them the truth that, praise God, we are not under obligation to all of these rituals and laws. Specifically, yesterday I was in emphasizing the Sabbath. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, it says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of a holiday, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. Five things listed, and it says in verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Most people agree that four of those five things have been fulfilled in Christ. We don't enforce the dietary laws. 1 Timothy chapter 4 says it's a doctrine of the devil if you tell people that they shouldn't eat pork. And yet that was a doctrine in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, it's a doctrine of the devil to say that. We've been redeemed from these things. Most people will agree with four of those five things, but when it comes to the Sabbath, many Christians are still thinking that they are honoring God by honoring a day and not doing certain work on a Sabbath day. And, of course, as I emphasized yesterday, very, very few people are very strict with this. They just do it in token. They may do a few little things, but they, they aren't even coming close to following all of the restrictions that were really put down on the Sabbath day. But even if you did it exactly the way the Old Testament said, that's not honoring God because the body is now in Christ. And what the Sabbath was a picture of was this rest that we now have in Hebrews chapter 4. It talks about. Just like at, in uh, Genesis the Lord created the heavens and the earth. He created Adam and Eve last because he prepared everything that they needed to succeed. All of the air, all of the food, all of the land, the climate, everything that mankind would ever need, God created that before he created us. And then as soon as he created Adam and Eve, he rested. This is what it says in Genesis chapter 2 that he saw everything that was good and he rested. And Hebrews chapter 4 is making this comparison. I'm not just pulling this out of the air. I'm following the exact logic of the writer of the book of Hebrews. When he talked about that there is a rest for the people of God, then he immediately said, just as God who rested from all of his works and he blessed that Sabbath day. So he is comparing this relationship that we have where we are resting in what Jesus has already done for us. We aren't trying to get God to do something, but we are resting in what has already been done. He compares that to a Sabbath, the Sabbath that the Lord took. And so as soon as God created Adam and Eve, he rested, and Adam and Eve just entered in to a completion where everything that they would ever need was already supplied. And likewise, when Jesus came, Jesus supplied everything that you and I would ever need. 
Spiritually speaking, he forgave all of our sins. And see, uh, this is something that, again, this concept isn't understood. And if it is, e even if people see it, they just pick and choose little bits and apply it partially, but they don't apply it across the board. When it comes to forgiveness of sins, the church typically believes that if you want to be saved, you've got to ask God to forgive you of your sins, which is not what the Scripture teaches. Over in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, Paul and Silas were in prison, and this jailer was going to kill himself, and Paul told him, don't kill yourself, we're all here. He got a light, he came in, and he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they didn't say, well, ask Jesus if he will save you. Request it and see if he'll honor your request. That's not what they said. They said, believe on the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. Believe what? Believe that Jesus had already died for their sins, that he had already forgiven their sins. You don't have to ask God to forgive. You just believe that he did it and you reach out and take it. That would be, again, going back to this comparison that Hebrews chapter 4 makes, that would be like Adam and Eve saying, oh God, we're hungry, feed us. And the Lord says, oh, I, I forgot to provide food for you. No, that's not the way it was. He already had provided the food. But he didn't force them to eat it. They had to reach out and take it. They couldn't just pray and beg God and say, oh, please give us something to eat. We're hungry. He created it. Now they had to reach out and take it. If it was a banana, they had to peel the banana and eat it. God didn't peel it for them. He created the fruit, but he didn't peel it for them and force it down their throat. Likewise, Jesus has provided everything. You don't need to say, oh, God, heal me. He's already done it. 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes you were healed. See, it's already done. That's grace. It's already provided. But does that mean that it's automatic? No, you have to reach out, and that's what faith is. Faith doesn't make God heal you. Faith reaches out and rests in the fact that I believe I'm healed. I reject this doctor's report. I reject this pain in my body. I reject what I see and feel, and I am resting in what God says. And like it says in Hebrews 4.11, you may have to labor to rest like that. You may have to fight to rest. You may have to get into the words. You may have to scream at the top of your lungs. You may have to cut off some people who have been friends and influences in your life because they just are speaking in the natural and you're speaking in the spiritual. There may be a lot that you have to do, but it's not what you do and then God responds to you with a healing. No, God has already done it and you may have to do a lot of stuff to, to rest and to say, I am not moving off of my faith. I am not moving off of what God has given me. You have to labor to rest. And see, this is what the Sabbath was a picture about. People had to plant crops. They had to get the rocks out of the field. They had to put the seeds in the ground. They had to water it. They had to pull the weeds. There was things that they had to do. And if you aren't careful, you could think that it was your work that was making all of this happen. You can make an argument for that because if you don't do anything with the field, if you don't pull the weeds, if you don't pull the rocks, if you don't make furrows, if you don't plant your seed, if you don't water it, you aren't going to get a crop. And so some people could say, well, it was my work that made this happen. But you know what? All your work was doing was taking something that God had already created, a seed, and it was just germinating. You didn't make that seed. Mankind, with all of their collective wisdom, you could take all of the wisdom of the human race, pool it all together, get all of the scientists, all of the millionaires. You can invest as much money. You can do anything. You could create something that looks like a seed, might taste like a seed, might have the same weight as a seed, and on and on. But you know what? It won't grow. If it's man-made, it doesn't have life in it. The truth is that that little seed is a miracle. God puts something inside of every seed that causes a supernatural thing. Like the, I was just out at the sequoias and the redwoods. And did you know that that all comes from a little tiny seed? These huge, huge trees are in that little tiny seed. Nobody can understand that. But you know what? You can take it and you can plant it and you can nurture it and you can see it grow. And so it would be easy for you to think, oh, it's my effort that made all this happen. But you can put all of that effort 
into a man-made seed and it'll never grow anything. No, it was what God gave you, but you have to cooperate with it. And so there is really a, there's a symbiotic relationship here. God creates the miracle, but then you have to plant it and you have to weed it and you have to keep it going. And you need to recognize that even though you're doing things, it's the miracle that God placed in that seed that causes the growth and that feeds your belly and does all of this. How is it that you remember that? How is it that you recognize God as your source? Well, it was real simple. He said, take one out of seven days off and see if it was just all about your work, if it was only your effort, if it wasn't your relationship with God well, then it would be silly to take one day out of seven off because you wouldn't prosper as much as the people that work seven out of seven days. But because God is the source and God told you to do this, if you will honor him and obey him and follow his direction and take one day out of seven off, God will bless you more than the people that work seven out of seven days. And that's what it did. And then in Leviticus chapter 25, he told the Israelites to take one year out of seven off. And now that for sure, somebody might miss the one day out of seven off and they might think, well, it just, you know, I, it, you don't have to work seven out of seven days. But man, when you take one year out of every seven off, how are you going to prosper? And Leviticus chapter 25 makes it very clear. If anybody says, how will we live during the seventh year? Then he says, I'll command my blessing upon you and your crops will produce triple a normal harvest on the sixth year. And that'll carry you through the sixth year, through the seventh year, and through the eighth year while your new crops are growing up. And all of this was about trusting in the Lord. And that's what the Sabbath was a picture of. And in the New Testament, we are now supposed to rest in the Lord. You know something that is comparable to all of this? Is the tithe. M many people haven't made this connection. But again, here you are working a job. You get up early. You work late. You do things sometimes that you don't want to do. And it would be easy for you to think that it is my effort that got me all of this money. When you go and collect your paycheck, you don't just go up to the boss and just fall on your face and, oh, thank you, you are so generous. Thank you so much for giving me this money. No, you look at it as, I work for this. You owe me this. And many of you feel like they ought to be paying you more than you're getting. You aren't just overwhelmed with thankfulness and humility. You feel like this is mine. I earned it. And if you aren't careful, you'll forget that it's God's blessing on your life that enabled you to earn that, that gave you your health, that caused you to be born at the most prosperous time in the history of the world, that caused you to be born in a nation where you have freedom to work and to prosper and to do things. Many of you have gifts and talents. Some of you are artists. You have, uh, you know, a physical artist, drawing pictures. Some of you, you can sing and you have musical talents. Some of you just have an aptitude for accounting and for business type of things. Some of you are natural born leaders. You, God gave you these talents. Now you may develop it. You may go to a school and you may develop it, but you can't put in what God left out. And there are some of you that have never made the connection. You think that it's all your hard work that's made this career work and that has advanced you. And again, there is this symbiotic relationship. You do have to work. If you do nothing with what God gave you, you could starve to death and be a world leader by God's plan for your life. And yet you would have to cooperate. You would have to follow through on that. And so, yes, you have to do things. But on the other hand, if God didn't give you these talents and ability, if God didn't give you your health, you know, all he'd have to do is just scramble the chemicals in your brain just a little bit. Just put them off just a little bit. And I guarantee you, you would be in a padded cell someplace, unable to function. You don't cause your health. And you have to cooperate again. There's things you can do to destroy your health. You can overeat. You can smoke. You can drink. You can do dope and stuff, and you can hurt your health. But, I mean, God gave you this freedom. Again, it's like that little seed. There's things you have to do to get that seed to grow and get its maximum benefit. But you can't take a man-made seed 
and make it grow. There is a miracle in that seed, and all you're doing is cooperating. You, in a sense, are by faith believing that God put that miracle in that seed, and you're cooperating with it, and you're just resting in what God has done, the laws that He's created of seed, time, and harvest. Likewise, you, when you work, you are doing things, but you know what? It's God that gave you your health. It's God that gave you your opportunities. It's God who favors you. How is it that you keep yourself focused on the fact that, God, you're my source when you're doing all of these things? You know what the Lord did? He said, give me 10%. And if it was just all your effort and it was just you do the best you can and you, do, you get all of this as a result, if it was all about you, then it would be absolutely crazy to take 10% or even more of what God has given you and give it away because you would be moving away from your goals. You would be diminishing your wealth instead of increasing it. But over in Proverbs chapter 11, it says that there are those that withhold more than is meat and it tends to poverty, but the liberal soul will be made fat. That's counterintuitive. That's contrary to the way most people think. If it was just you, then taking a portion of what you've got and giving it away diminishes you and decreases your wealth instead of increases it. But because God is your source and God is the one who causes promotion, promotion doesn't come from the east or from the west or from the south, but it is God that puts up one and sets down another. God is the source of promotion. You may not recognize it. You may think it's all your hard work and you're getting promoted because you are the slickest thing since sliced bread. But God is the one that gave you that health. God is the one that gave you these talents and abilities. God is the one who gives you favor. God is the one who draws people to you and lets them see these things. And so how is it that you express your faith and dependence that God, you're my source. Even though I'm working, you're my source. You take a portion of what you've got and you give it away which is stupid. It's crazy unless there is a God who is your source. And that God said in Luke 6, 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. If God hadn't have said that, then it would be crazy to take a portion of what you've got and give it away. But because God is your source and you are resting in Him, you are believing that He by grace wants you to prosper and has already provided it, then it's just the opposite of what it, you would think. When you give that away, it, you are putting faith in Him. And by faith, you are reaching out and taking this grace this blessing, this abundance that God has provided. And I can promise you, I could give you personal testimony by the thousands that when you give, it's given back unto you. You don't lose, you increase. There are some of you in financial bind and you just feel like you can't give. And you know what you're doing? You aren't trusting God. You aren't trusting the promises that when you give, it'll be given back unto you. You aren't trusting the promise, and like Proverbs chapter 3, honor the Lord with your first fruits and with the increase. And that's the, how your barns get filled with plenty and your presses burst out with new wine. You don't trust those scriptures. And you say, but I've got to have this. Your trust is in that money and not in God. And you can whitewash that. You can paint it any way you want to. You can talk about how desperate your situation is. But the bottom line is God said give and you will increase. You will have more. If you aren't giving, it's because you do not trust those promises of God, period. End of discussion. And so see, this is, this is similar to that Sabbath. The Lord told them don't work one day out of seven. Don't work one year out of seven. And you will prosper more than the people who work every single day of every single year. It was a matter of faith. And it's now fulfilled in Christ. And likewise, the Lord is telling us that, you know what, you need to take a portion of what you have and give it back to me. Bless other people with it. And if you would do that, 
you would prosper more than if you kept the whole thing. That doesn't make sense to your natural mind, but that's what the Word of God promises, and that's the reason that God told us to do all of these things because it's all about trusting Him. I tell you, this is powerful. And this is what I've used to illustrate grace and faith. God, by grace, has already provided everything you will ever need. Now, are you going to trust Him? And are you going to rest in what He's done? Or are you going to come under pressure and feel like you've got to do it yourself? Are you going to work seven out of seven days? Are you going to work seven years out of seven years? Are you going to keep 100% of what you've got? Or are you going to honor God? And are you going to trust in Him and rest in Him? And it's not necessarily easy to rest, but it's beneficial. You have to labor to get to a place where you say, I don't care what I feel like. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the banker says. Here's what God says, and I'm resting in that. I will not take worry and care. I believe that God's Word is true. Man, that's powerful. And I just know in my heart that there are millions of, of people watching this program today that God has been speaking directly to you and that He's identified certain things in your life where you aren't resting in Him. You've taken all of the worry and the care about your situation upon your own shoulders. You can't sleep at night. It's hard for you to eat. You're just stressed out because you've taken all of this care upon yourself. You need to rest in the fact that God loves you and that God has provided the answer to your problem before you ever had the problem. And just rest in Him. Let go of you trying to do it and trying to force God into it and just rest in Him. Enter into that Sabbath rest. And if you could do that, you would see transformation. Man, that's powerful. Andrew's complete teaching titled Living in the Balance of Grace and Faith is now available in a new paperback book for £9.99. Contact us today to get your copy. In addition, you can also get this teaching in a companion study guide for £17.50. This teaching was also recorded live at a Gospel Truth Seminar. It's available on either CD or DVD. Or if you prefer, you can get this DVD as seen on TV. Each is available for £16. Remember to specify CD, DVD, or DVD as seen on TV when you contact us. This series is also available for audio download absolutely free on our website. Go to awme.net and click on MP3 Downloads on the left-hand side of the page. The fourth audio teaching in today's series is available for £3 when you write or call. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will send this fourth CD titled, Entering the Rest, Free of Charge. The way I make my materials available are that we suggest a donation of such and such for an album or for a book. But we send it basically whether a person can send that whole amount or not. We just show you what it, we think it's worth. But I know that there's some people who could not or would not send anything. And yet, I want you to get this teaching. So what I do, I make the individual teachings in this CD set available one at a time, free of charge. My partners have enabled me to do that. And so today will be my last day to make this fourth part in the five-part series in this CD set available to you. So listen to our announcer and please call or write today. You can use your credit card to order resources by telephone. Our helpline number is 01922-473-300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44-1922-473-300. Helpline hours are from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Or you can visit our website where you can order ministry materials 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at awme.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life.
He'll be in Warwick, England this week for the Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe Ministers Conference October 24th through the 26th in Kampala, Uganda for a Gospel Truth Seminar October 28th and 29th and at the Glory of Christ Church in Kampala Sunday, October 30th. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, call our helpline or visit our website at awme.net. While flipping TV channels in their home in Kathmandu, Nepal, Bob and Dawa Wesley stumbled across the Gospel Truth broadcast with Andrew Womack, and their lives were changed forever. When I found out that how much God loved me and what He did for me, I started understanding the Gospel, actually. Desiring to fulfill God's call on their lives, Bob and Dawa moved to Colorado Springs and attended Karis Bible College. Then it was back to Nepal and back to work. I started walking towards my office and I started seeing these two little boys and their feet was cracked and you know their clothes were really, really dirty. I asked the Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said, feed them. With that direction from God, their ministry was born, feeding the destitute boys of Kathmandu, both physically and spiritually. I've always focused on sharing the gospel with these kids. And it is only the Word of God that changes the lives of the people. It is only the gospel. Another changed life, changing the world. Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College. Are you a world changer? Karis Bible College has extension schools around the world. The same truth that sets you free at our school in England will also set you free in Belfast, St. Petersburg, Amsterdam, Kampala, Chennai, and South Africa. Go to awme.net or call our phone center and ask for a complete list of Karis Bible College locations near you. Change your life. Change the world. Never despise small beginnings. Hungary, a former satellite of the Soviet Empire, is now a distribution center for Andrew Womack's teaching materials. From this small village house, boxes everywhere. <laughs> Andrew's translated books are being shipped across Europe in 19 languages, with more to come. Each book shipped from this house is a seed planted for a multiplied harvest to come. They got about every spot in here used. Log on to awmi.net, look to the left and click on Ministry News. Discover what's happening at Andrew Womack Ministries. You do not have to motivate God to heal. God wants to heal more than you want to be healed. The almost too good to be true news you can use www.awmi.net.